Welcome back, everybody, to episode one of Arcanium. My first episode that I put out on YouTube is episode zero, where I talk about all of the different aspects of the game, how to design a, a party, how the game plays, um, all the UI elements, the options, and all that good stuff. Talked about this map, which looks a little confusing at first. Um, so in this episode, we'll go ahead and get started, and I'll be able to show what a battle looks like. So I think we'll get started by going ahead down here to this defense battle, just so I can show you what, what the battles look like. You can see the rewards are going to be two abilities, and it's going to give me plus two. You can see under defense battles is plus two. So there's going to be two threat added to this total here for going to this node. And once, of course, we reach 90, that's when we have to fight the boss fight. No matter where we are on the map, the boss fight begins after the event that gets you to 90. So this is a defense battle. So rather than kill the monsters to win, we actually just have to s just hang out for four rounds and survive. Killing the monsters is still a really good idea because they take a turn or two to respawn. And so that's a couple rounds that you might save of just not having to deal with stuff. So let's go ahead out over here to this node. So you can see this is the monsters we're going to end up fighting. So this is a defense battle. Enemies respawn on their next turn. So we have this Skaros Tamer. It's at 25 health. This character takes 50% light damage. So we have to be careful about that. They deal damage in a line. They can summon a snake. That's a 6-6. Six, six. They can dispel our units. And they have a super ability that's a, a 9 damage and a splash. And then the sand elemental, again, takes less damage from light. Pretty cool looking monster, actually. Multi-strike, deal two damage three times. So that's bad for our tank, who's going to only block... Um, the, our tank character, Leon, blocks hits rather than a certain amount of damage. So anything that hits him multiple times will get through his defenses faster. Sand Fist does a fairly high amount of damage. We've got a Desert Typhoon Summon. Now this is has block, which means that my characters won't be able to target... Um, the unit behind until this is gone. And Sand Barrier gains two, six shield and a splash. This one can buff its friends up. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's got pretty cool graphics, doesn't it? I really like how you can see little portraits of our characters. Um, and they'll kind of change as you do things. They'll kind of have like little exclamations or something as they get attacks. Like she gets really excited when she burns stuff. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So what we can do here is we can actually move our units around for free right now. During a battle, moving a unit costs an action point, unless you have some ability that does that for you. So what we want to do now is make sure that our characters are arrayed in a way that will make them the most effective. So these are all going to be light damage resistant. So it doesn't really matter where our damage characters start. So we want Leon in the middle. It's going to make it easier for him to grab aggro from characters and um, taunt. So we'll go ahead and leave him there. We'll leave Aurora over here on the edge. Doesn't really matter. And uh, Angorn can be over here. And then we may have to move him around with Leon during the fight in order to get healing and shielding onto Aurora. So now the enemies are going to plan what they're going to do. So you can see if I hover over this Skaros Tamer, this character is going to use the Trident Strike. It's going to do five damage. So you can see here it shows five damage is incoming. And it's going to be in a line. That's what this arrow means. So that means that if there's a minion here in the way, they would both take five damage. So I have to be careful about that, although we don't have any minions yet. This is the estimated damage he's going to take. This is a really nice feature in the game because if you end up, like, you've got bleed and void damage and burning on you and the enemy's going to multi-strike you, three for two damage and you have one block you know like how much damage are you going to take it's nice that the game shows you that so you don't have to constantly be pausing to figure out exactly what you need to do when there's so many things going on at once that's really nice that it kind of just math does the math for you so it's really more about the strategy of your card playing than it is about constantly calculating the damage values so we're going to take eight damage over here that's not good so we can deal four damage and taunt Deal five damage in a cleave. Now resolve means reduce the cost of this card for each enemy targeting you. Okay. Deal six damage. Okay. So we want to go ahead and taunt this character like so. So he's, <laughs> he's excited. So now he's going to take a lot of damage. So we need to figure out a way to protect him. We have regenerate, damage in a line, and shield and backlash. So this card... So we want to go ahead and use the shield card on Leon over here to give him 10 shield. And backlash means that when enemies hit him, they'll take a little bit of damage back. 
The other thing to note is that you can see that there are different um, symbols over the the, num the cost of the card. So this has like two shields right here. This has a sword and these have an arrow. So there's a few different things going on here. A sword means melee. That means that I cannot target these units over here because I'm melee. I can only target the one that's closest to me or if there's a minion here, I could target that one. But I can't target here and I can't target here. A uh, range can target one further than that. So with the ignite, I could target here or I could target here, but I can't target all the way over here. So the range allows you to target a little bit further out. The shield, if there's one shield, it means it's just for you. And if there's two shields, it means you could target an ally that's one away from you. So Angorn here can use the thorny shield on himself or Leon, but not on Aurora, who's too far away. If we wanted to use that, we would scoot him over with Leon, but it will cost us an action point to do that. Down here are our action points. We've got three on Angorn right now. You'll get three per turn, so you can actually end turn. Like, I could end turn with Leon with these two, and they won't be wasted. He'll just have five action points next turn. Useful if you have a lot of expensive stuff, uh, or if there's just nothing to play in your hand. You might as well just save them just in case. But for the most part, you don't really need to save up a ton of action points. Often, you just want to do as much stuff as you can in a turn. There are ways to buff your characters to have more or actually even fewer maximum action points uh, for different buffs and debuffs and stuff you can get throughout the game. Usually powerful like party effects you get from shrines. So back to what we were working on here. So with Angorn here, we want to go ahead and put the thorny shield on Leon. As you can see now, he's estimated to only take three damage because the shield, you can see up in the top left there, the trident strike is going to be blocked. And then the sand fist is going to hit him and it's going to block most of it and he'll just take three. That's a very manageable amount of damage. He's going to take five damage. So what we might do here is go ahead and apply this regeneration to himself. And so that means he'll take the five damage, but then at the start of his next turn, he's going to gain two health. So effectively three, and then we'll lose a tick of this, and it'll go down to one. So you can stack up regeneration on characters. And there's one other thing to note here that's going on. There's these little pips on this bar underneath this character. You can see Angorn has three, six, eight pips. Leon has only six, and Aurora has like 12 or something. Those are ultimate charges. When you play cards... Or maybe that's when you spend action points, actually. I think it might be action points. You um, gain pips of your ult. When you get your ult, you can there's a, bit like a little button you can click to draw your ultimate card. And that card is... Uh, basically, it's free to play, and then you reset. And everybody has a different ultimate. Um, can I show their ultimates here? I believe I can. Yeah. So, uh, Angorn's ultimate is Soothing Rain. So, it takes eight charges of his ultimate to use gain three regeneration and cleanse in a splash so that means he could target somebody like leon and it would splash to everybody cleanse them of debuffs and give them some regeneration leon's ultimate divine aegis gained one immune in a splash and expend so that gives everybody one damage nullification basically so that's a quite powerful way to tank and aurora's is 18 damage and apply stun and expend so it's a pretty big damage and it also stuns which is very valuable making enemies lose turns is very valuable if you can't tell you know like this battle we survive four rounds so if we stun an enemy they lose a quarter of their participation in the whole fight which is very powerful so for aurora let's see we've got a 12 damage fireball five damage double if the target has burn so probably we want to go ahead and apply three burn here and then this one will do 10 this one will do 12 um it's probably better to do this one and save the point it's almost the same damage but only costs us one fewer point here we can do five damage in a cleave now again this crusader strike has resolve so for each enemy targeting him it costs one less so he wants to taunt enemies and then his cards cost less you can see it normally would cost two you can see on the left over there but right now it costs zero because we taunted this one so we can actually hit here and do some damage to all of them which is very helpful this card here deals 6 damage and restore 4 health. I don't want to use this yet. I'd rather just save the points. He has maximum health, so it's kind of a waste to do this just for the damage when it costs 2 points to do 6 damage. Not really worth it. I'd rather save his action points. So we'll go ahead and end turn here. Took some burn damage. Then they should go in this order. Yep, a little bit of damage. Got through the shield. Takes a little bit of damage. and then But his backlash hit them back. Okay, good. 
So now we're going to take a look. Now they're going to summon here. It's going to summon a desert snake, a desert snake. And this one's going to use that glass shards multi-attack on Aurora for six damage. Should be very easy to kill this character. We could actually just... Hmm... Crescent Strike like so. I'll kill this guy off. Now, he will respawn. And monsters actually respawn in all the different modes, for the most part. Um, it's just that as long as they're respawning, you're saving a lot of time. So that's very helpful. So now he won't get to do anything. So we don't have to worry about protecting Aurora. So the other thing we want to do here is get our health back. Use up a couple of these points to do some damage. But we want to wait and see how much we need to do. Now, Angorn here doesn't really need to put shield on anybody right now. So he might just do the five damage in a line. And then we'll save his points. So Aurora here can do 12 damage. 12 damage. So we could just hit here and then hit here again. There we go. So two KO'd units means... Um, now they don't get to do anything for one turn. Now, you can see here under the enemies, they also have the ability to charge up their ultimates. So I have to be careful because I can't check now. I could check at the beginning, but once this unit uses one more card, they'll be able to use that bigger splash attack. That, or I think they have a shield splash so they can buff his friends up. So I have to be careful of that. Go ahead and... Um, I think it's probably worth swapping to get that in. And then we'll have Angorn swap back. So the nice thing is if you want to swap two characters, either one of them can spend that action point to do so. Okay, so we have something interesting here. Now, this is an elusive character. Um, so this character will have some stuff on them. Uh, picking whatever treasure it can from the fallen enemy before it runs away. So we want to kill this guy immediately, this turn. Cannot be affected by crowd control, so we can't stop this unit from escaping. We can't stun him, but he's basically like a treasure goblin. So you can see he's got some little treasure stuff sticking out of his pack there. So we want to get rid of this guy right now. So I think what we want to do... This is 17 damage exactly right here, so let's go ahead and do that. I don't want this guy to escape. There we go. 58 gold. So we just actually made an extra 58 gold because we killed like a treasure looter guy there. And then this guy will respawn now. We kind of uh, <laughs> kind of messed up his complete turn there. So now we have a minion over here. We've got a little bit of a problem. So we, do we want to taunt this? Okay, so this character is going to use five damage in a line. And then this snake will just automatically just attack, like, just sort of dumbly just in front of it. Minions are really basic units. Like, they don't really strategize at all. They don't have any special abilities usually. Um, but they, you know, it's kind of a lot of damage. So we have this five damage in a line. That's pretty helpful. I'll kill this guy off. So now we still have this snake to deal with. Could give ourselves this shield. And then that means when this unit, see, so you can see the skull, it's saying that, it's estimating that this unit will die. Because when he hits us, it won't even go through our shield. But now we have backlash. So it's going to do a, da a damage back and actually kill the snake, which is very helpful. Over here we have, okay, so we don't have a way to protect Leon. So we'll just go ahead and hit him. Uh, we could actually draw our ultimate here, but it's probably best to save that and just go ahead and take the, the little bit of damage. So I might actually pass, and I can use this next turn to get back some of the health we're going to lose. So we'll just pass here. Oh, he didn't kill himself. Next nature damage when taking direct damage. That's weird. Why didn't he die from that? He should have died from that. Hmm, that's not ideal. Okay, this character is going to do the Sand Fist, the Desert Snake. Okay, so we want to draw our ultimate here. So here's this Divine Aegis I showed you. This, uh, wow, it's got a lot of abilities on it. Expend means it'll be removed from the battle, but that just means it's not going to get shuffled into his deck again. It just means it leaves until we charge his ult back up, and then we can get it again. Another nice thing is if we don't use this, um, it actually goes back here at the end of the round, and the next turn we can draw it again. So this is not wasted if I click draw ultimate and then don't use it. Very, ni very nice quality of life feature. I can't waste this by drawing it. So we'll go ahead and use this now. So the immunity is very important. Now, as you can see, like I was trying to mention earlier, multi-attack is the counter to immunity because this character is going to hit three times for two damage, the immunity will only block one instance of damage. So she's still taking two-thirds of that damage total, which is unfortunate. But 
What we can also do here is uh, taunt. There. So we'll take it on to Leon instead here. Go ahead and get a little bit of healing. We can actually do it again. There we go. Full health. Uh, we can apply shield. Let's do that so we're not going to take any damage. We can use his ultimate. I think... No, I can't target over there, unfortunately. So I could apply regeneration here. And then I don't... If I switch them... Oh, yeah, the taunt goes to him. Whoops. <laughs> That's okay. We'll apply this. Apply some regeneration in a line here. What do we want to do with Aurora? Just put some burn on this character here. Uh, do some... Let's draw her ult, actually, as well. 18 damage and stun. There we go. So he's not even going to attack. We'll just do it like that. So we'll take a little bit of damage from Leon. We'll regenerate some of it, and then battle will be over because we'll have survived four rounds. Okay, survived. We stopped them here and now. So we survived our four rounds, so we've we've succeeded. You can click on the battle details afterwards. See how many times anybody dies, which is obviously zero. Damage taken to health. So Leon took a lot of damage to his health, but managed to heal almost all of it back up throughout the, the battle, thanks to himself and Angorn's regeneration. Absorb damage by shield, direct damage dealt. You can see Aurora does a lot of damage. Leon does a fairly high amount of damage. He taunts by hitting things, basically. Overtime damage, so that's like dots, like the burn. Enemies destroyed. Aurora killed off a lot of enemies. Uh, Non-healing buff stacks applied. Non-damage buff stacks applied. Debuff stacks applied. So we didn't do any debuffing of enemies. We just kill them. <laughs> uh, shield applied 30. That's really cool. Uh, we can see like how many of each card we used. I think this is really fascinating that they put this in. Here are the ultimates here. So you can see you know, the most used cards. We use a lot of these three times. And then artifacts, yeah, here, so these are our special cards we drew. So we hit continue. So now we're going to get some gold, 62 gold, 58 gold. This is a pretty good amount. So there's our gold we got from killing that elusive. This was an extra. So here is where we get to pick an ability. So it'll give us three semi-random cards from, you know, you can see we didn't even get one for Aurora. We got two choices for Angorn and one choice for Leon. So we have a power grip, deal four damage, pull the target to your lane. That's interesting. Shuffle two sprouting cards into the target's draw pile. What is that? Apply six shield to yourself, draw one, expend. That's pretty cool. We'll probably get that one or cleansing touch. I think we want this one. Gives us some more really cheap shielding um, so that you can focus on shielding and healing other characters. So we'll go ahead and grab this one. And then you can click equip to make sure it goes right into his deck. And our second ability Searing Beam, deal three piercing damage for every two Fury on you in a line. Now, Fury is used to purchase your ultimate cards in battle. So that's our ultimate charge. Gain one Fury per AP spent. So deal three piercing damage for every two Fury on you in a line. So if you get your ultimate charged up, you spend this card and do... I think she's got like 12. So she could do a whole lot of damage with this card. So I have Recycle for Angorn. The target may discard X cards and draw X cards. I don't know how we know what the X is. Maybe you get to just choose as many as you want at that time. Or Molten Shield for Aurora, Enchant 3. So that means this card applies a powerful status effect on the target that cannot be dispelled or cleansed and lasts for X rounds. So gain 4 Shield at the start of each turn. Apply Burn equal to all Burn on you upon getting hit. So if, if Aurora has burn on herself, she can apply it to other people. There is a bit, There are ways to build her in a way that she <laughs> sort of immolates herself and then, and then destroys enemies by, by running, basically running into them and letting them catch fire as well. I think we'll go with this Searing Beam. This seems pretty cool. Go ahead and equip that. All right, so we've completed our first objective. So now you can see, oh, here's the capital. I was talking about that in the intro video. I wasn't sure where it was, but it's right underneath us. So... Uh, we can click here to browse shops at any time, um, but we can also travel here, but it will cost us threats. So we don't want to do that right now. We don't have enough money to make good use of that. So we can check out our deck. So Aurora, we now have like, we have all these starting like new, like basic level cards that have the green dot. Now we have this like rare card that's blue. So she's getting closer to this slot bonus. 
And we also have one for him, but we it was just a common card, basically. Okay, so next up, I think I'd like to head over this way, do this defense battle, and then we'll have access to a couple of shrines. Now, this gives us a lot of threat, but this gives permanent upgrades to our heroes for the rest of the run. And being so close together, we can kind of get both of them really quickly. And we can move on to doing this. Uh, this is likely going to be a side quest. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this defense battle here. So we've got Sand Elemental and these. So this is basically the same battle. So it'll be a little bit faster in this battle. I won't quite explain quite so much. Um, so this looks good to me. I don't think it really matters. This guy's got the multi-strike attack. So it's good to have the shields on his side. I probably should have done that in the first one. All right, so we're going to be summoning, summoning, and doing a big damage attack here. So we don't have... Hmm. Okay, so we'll taunt him. So Leon will get hit instead. Go ahead and put these sprouting cards in the deck. And we can apply a couple regeneration here to Leon. Over on this side. Probably go ahead and do the burn and the ignite we'll save that action point we can also do this cleave which is only cost one right now because we're only being because we're being targeted by somebody so i think we'll go ahead and spend that so we've summoned a snake summoned a snake okay so this is a much more dangerous looking turn we got damage in a line coming through damage in a line plus these snakes so we really need to to deal with this right now. Now we have a lot of these damage and heal. Uh, damage and align. Apply six shield to yourself, draw one expand. So that's good. So he'll block all of that. Now he's got this shield for himself. We don't need that. Might pop on over to where Leon is and do damage and align. It's only five and they have six health. That's really unfortunate. Dear Deal three piercing and a line for each two fury, for every two fury on you. So we can get kind of a lot. Now this is only going to do three. So if we can get, oh, we can't get very much more. Darn. So I think we want to kill off this snake. And we've got more fury, so we could kill this guy off this way. Oh, uh, we should have fireballed over here. And then I could have done in a line, killed both of those. That's my bad. He's going to take a lot of damage. Um, let's go ahead and kill this snake off. That'll help. He's going to take five damage and then heal five damage from regen. So I think we're actually good here to pass and just save our action points. So he's regenerated. Now it ticks down. So now he's regenerating four. Um, sand barrier gains six shield and a splash. So that's not too bad. It's only going to be six health for two people. There's nothing. Uh, so you can see the targeting. It won't even target this minion, even if it was out. So nobody's targeting him for the resolve bonus. Hmm, what do we want to do here? Just apply some burn. We'll just save that. Next turn we can get our ultimate. Probably just kill this unit off all the way. We don't need our ultimate right now. I think I'll just do this to kill him off. Angorn doesn't need to do anything here, unfortunately. So we'll just spend a little bit here. Because we're just going to waste our time if we don't do anything. Okay, so we got a lot of attacks coming through here, but we can just draw Leon's ultimate. Do some immunity and a splash, so no damage, no damage. A little bit of damage, but that's because we got to kill one of these two off. So we could do... What's the ultimate? It's 18 damage, right? So... Yeah. 
18 damage. There we go. So if we fireball here, then we could ultimate this character. Yeah, she, she loves it. <laughs> she loves burning things to death. So we're not going to take any damage here, but we could do some damage. More damage and taunt. Okay, we just need to survive this next round. Looks like it's gonna be pretty easy because we don't have anything coming in really here. Oh, sorry, that was the end of it actually, my bad. So, all right, let's take a look. We have 57 gold. Oops, abilities here. We have the power grip again. Luminous Aegis, enchant three, restore two health whenever you lose immune. Interesting, or a cleanse. Let's grab this one. That's gonna be pretty useful. We'll go ahead and equip that. And another ability we have Resolve, Gain, Cleanse, Restore 6 Health. So this is the more people targeting him, the better. That's a lot. That's pretty costly, though. You'd have to have, you know, if you had three people targeting you, it costs one. You still you could take a lot of damage, though, and restore 6 health. I don't think that's good. Taunt in a Splash, Expend. So this is a once per battle. Uh, but that's really cool, taunting and a splash. Unfortunately, these would go well together, but we can't use both of them. So I think I might take the searing beam, actually. I'm going to equip that. Okay. So how close are we now? We need one more card for Aurora and two for the other two to get the plus one redraw. So let's head on over to this void shrine. Now, what do we have here? Forge, outpost, unlock for capital by new minion cards. Okay. So let's head on down this way, and we might kind of wrap around uh, and go up this way. We go to the Void Shrine, so now it's nighttime. So choose a blessing for the rest of this run. Mastery, heroes, start battles with 5 AP, so this way you just dump your hand at the very beginning. Apply one week to all enemies at the start of each turn. That decreases their damage by, I think, 10% per stack, so it's always only going to be 10% unless you have another way to apply it. Apply Dispel to all enemies every three rounds. Ooh, that's tempting. It's uncontrollable, but hmm, I think I might go with this one just so there's always there's always some uh, dispelling on the horizon if enemies have some kind of annoying buff that I can't get rid of. I think we can handle this, but this is I think that's good. Okay, um, so we might do one more fight before we hit the forge just so we're not just to make it more efficient we can also do this shard battle i might go like this way let's do that let's do a breach battle i'll show you what that looks like so we have a new enemy here a molten scorpion apply burn deal four damage in a cleave six piercing damage that'll go through resistances and shields but it's still blocked by immune so we have to be careful um, this we want to make sure we have leon taunt these stinger attacks and he's got a multi-strike three for six damage each with his ultimate. That's not good, but he's very low health. Takes low elemental damage, so we'll want to make sure Aurora does not face the scorpion. So we will put Aurora over here, Leon back in the center. So what's a breach battle? A breach battle means that when we kill any enemy, they are replaced with this shard until that enemy respawns, which is like one or two rounds. The shard is the thing we need to kill. The battles will go on infinitely. The enemies will respawn infinitely until we kill the shard. So it's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, Molten Scorpion says, taste the end of my blades. Okay. <laughs> so, you stand no chance. Yep, yep. Uh, shuffle. Okay. Ten shield and backlash. So we might taunt the scorpion. No, we gotta taunt this one from Aurora because she can't defend herself. Uh, now this is free to use. Now we definitely want to slap some shields on him. That's a lot of damage to be taking. And then we're just gonna have to eat a little bit of damage this round and then we'll just try to heal it back up over time. We'll save this. Uh, so up here we have uh, apply some burn and do more damage if they're burning. Okay, so we'll just leave that. Let's 
So we've taken a little bit of damage. Not too bad. Pretty easy to heal up from that. So we have here a Fire Claw. I'm going to apply some Burn. Be interesting if we had those cards that Aurora gets a bonus to if she's burning. So if we apply three burn to this character, he'll actually die at the start of his turn. So he will not actually get to do whatever this attack is. We don't have to worry about this. Um, Ignite does double damage of burning. Piercing damage. So this card here is actually melee. So this is unusual for her. This is not a ranged attack. She can only hit the thing in the lane she's with. So we might go ahead and use this even though it's only five damage. So we're not wasting our uh, action points here. So moving on over to Leon. Um, enchant through your store two health whenever you lose immune. Is that useful for this turn? I don't know if burn is blocked by immune. But I can't taunt it off of him anyway. So we'll go ahead and put... Go ahead and splash this backlash shield onto him just to block. I, don't, I think that'll block the burn. I'm not... Sure, or maybe he won't have the shield by the time the burn goes off. I guess we're gonna learn. He's gonna take one damage at least. We'll go ahead and do this, even though I guess we wasted our burn there. Oh, here's the shard. Yeah. So is this worth doing? Eleven damage. Yeah, just in case it's gonna leave. Okay. Oh, the shard maintains the burn that we had on the unit there. That's interesting. I hadn't really realized that. Okay, so responding next turn. Blessing of Dampening. Oh, the debuff. The the dispel. That's cool. It's a cool effect. It looks like a like a eclipse or a black hole. It's like <laughs> Okay. So we want to kill this shard off, and that'll make us win. So we just want to go ahead and uh, blast this thing here. I think this is gonna be over because I think it's gonna take this damage and then that it just dies and the battle ends. But in case that they all get to continue their turn, we wanna go ahead and... Let's just taunt everything over here. Draw our ultimate. Some immunity. More damage and taunt. Oh, we could kill it now. Here we go. There we go. Because the shard shows up no matter anywhere that there's a dead unit. There we go. So we didn't have to take any damage. Perfect. We got 58 gold. We need one more ability for Aurora to get an extra redraw. Apply two burn. Apply one extra burn per burn on you. So we're not really using that strategy. So that's not really going to help. Cleanse or absorb all debuffs in a splash. Um... I don't really want... These just don't go together without cleanse. So I think we'll just go ahead and grab this just to fill her deck. Uh, we also have combustion. Gain one shield per fury on you. That's interesting. Because she can have a lot of fury. Apply two weak. Decrease damage by 10% per stack. Fireflies. That's interesting. Gives him the ability to sort of shield his allies indirectly by making the enemies do less damage. That's an interesting idea. That weakness will probably be more effective on enemies hitting for big damage because, it, you know, 10% of like 3 damage doesn't do anything, but 10% of 10 damage does something. So I don't know. I might. I might grab another one of these Luminous Aegis cards. We'll equip that. So let's take a look at our decks real quick. Okay, so she's full. She's got the plus one redraw. He needs one more. Angorn needs two more. Okay, we can handle that. All right, everybody. Well, we're all out of time for this episode. I hope you're enjoying watching this particular game, this particular playthrough. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any questions or comments about the game, leave those below. And uh, I hope I did a good job of explaining what's going on. Um, and I will see everybody in the next episode.